Uh, I'm Wade Bickle. I am the origination manager for food grade at the Hensel Co-op. Um, Where is Hensel? Hensel is about you know 40 miles north, due north of London, Ontario, right against Lake Huron and Huron County. Um, it's really great to be part of this Farms.com Ontario Yield Tour. Uh, first time for me ever being involved with it, so it's pretty neat. Uh, I was going to mention I also farm with my two brothers uh, near St. Mary's, Ontario. You know, we raise some kidney beans, some IP soybeans, some wheat, corn, hay, and even a few beef cows running around the farm. Um, I'm going to talk to you about two subjects that are near and dear to me and the Hensel Co-op is dry beans and food grade soybeans. Um, for dry beans, I'm going to talk about you know, the, what mark, market influences there are for the 2024 crop. Uh, I'll give you some numbers and I'll probably mess them up and I'll mix up market classes, but we'll, we'll have some fun, okay? Uh, I wanted to start out by pointing out some of the major dry bean growing regions in North America. North America is projected to have planted 1.95 million acres of dry beans in many, many states and parts of, the, of North America. That I'm, and I'm talking mostly U.S. and Canada. We don't really have a good handle on the Mexican numbers, but I'm talking about U.S. and Canada. The biggest growing region by far is North Dakota. They grow 25% of all those dry bean acres in Canada and the U.S. Uh, and then next is Michigan. They're, see, I'm gonna have to look down. Michigan is 13% of those planted acres. Ontario, we're at six. 6% 6 of the North American or Canada US dry beans are here in Ontario. And then the, the Western Canadian regions of Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Hensel Co-op does have a presence in Manitoba with uh, receiving and processing. And you know, those three provinces make up about 13% of the U.S. Canadian dry beans. Anybody in the group here currently growing dry beans or have grown them in the past? Show of hands. This is going to be way more fun if we're a little interactive, right? So, <laughs> anyways, thanks, Marvin. Um, what's my next step here? We'll, we'll kind of talk about the major market classes. For pinto beans being the biggest class of dry beans, in fact, North Dakota grows like 750,000 acres of pinto beans that they're expected to grow in 2024. And, you know, that's, that's probably the largest class of the, of, that we produce here in Canada and the U.S. Uh, the next would be uh, black beans. Oh, I should point out too, you know, those, those pinto beans, you, you may be eating them already, so if you like refried beans or chili con carne or those types of foods, that's, that's where those pinto beans are used. Black beans is the other big class. Um, Michigan grows a big chunk of the black beans and so does North Dakota. Um, both of these classes, pintos and blacks, in 2024 have seen a 50% increase in planted acres. So that is going to equate, likely, it's not in the bin, but likely to lower prices at, at harvest for those two commodities. Okay, so that kind of gives you a layout of the two biggest ones. So the other ones that are really important to Hensel Co-op is white beans, or I may refer to them as navy beans. Um, in Ontario, it's a big part of our production. It is uh, the Hensel Co-op. Uh, supplies about 50% of the navy beans or white beans to the UK. So they are the biggest consumers of white beans in the world, let's say. But the uh, North American market is pretty strong too. Everybody likes a can of baked beans once in a while, and that's what white beans or navy beans are, baked beans. The one that's also near and dear to my heart, because I grow them at home, is kidney beans. Kidney beans you know, a much smaller market class. They're harvested with specialty equipment. And, you know, they're, they're a very small market. So slight fluctuations in yield or slight fluctuations in planted acres can make a big difference on the value at harvest. 
Okay. I will also point out a little bit that we're, we, we don't own the, white, the, the dry bean market in Canada and the U.S. We compete against some big players. Uh, Brazil grows 4 million acres of dry beans every year. They don't really compete against us much because they consume most of those acres. So that's, that's, but they can. If they have a great crop, they'll be out there on the market. Their neighbors to the south, Argentina is also a big player and exports a great deal of their beans. And they'll, grow, they'll export cranberry beans, kidney beans, black beans, and even some navy beans. And then some other, other parts of the world that compete against us is Ethiopia, believe it or not, is a big exporter of dry beans into, the, into Europe. And Eastern Europe itself is a big producer of dry beans. So we compete against all these different parts of the world as well. So it's, uh, if anybody thinks the dry bean market is easy, uh, they should you know, come work for us. Um, that gives you a little idea on, on dry beans and kind of the origination and how the market looks in 2024. Food grade soybeans is a really important part of what I do as well with Hensel Co-op. And I know that many of you probably grow IP soybeans in Eastern Ontario as well. But um, non-GMOs in Canada and the US, probably 5.9 million acres are gonna be grown in 2024. And you really gotta differentiate it, okay? So it's just, it's just not all IPs. There is a great deal of, of uh, non-GMO soybeans that are produced. Yes? Fava beans, do they grow in here? Fava beans? Yeah. They grow them in Western Canada. Some yeah. people grow them for feed here in Ontario. Like there's a guy that has 3,000 acres and it's all sold to China ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. But here we seem to grow nothing. Yeah, it's a tough, tough crop to grow. We don't market any fava beans, hence a co-op, but um, where was it? IP soybeans. Um, yeah, so 5.9 million acres in, in the U.S. and Canada. That's differentiated by feed and food and even more differentiated by IP and bin run. And so it's, it's all of that. So in, in Ontario, though, we're very good at identity preservation. And we've put a lot of resources into identity preservation that many companies have, like Hensel Co-op or Savita or the other ones that we play, that we're play in this market. Um, I think you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that the major markets for these beans are in this part of the world. Inside this circle is 50% of the world's population. Inside that circle in Southeast Asia is 50% of the population. The other statistic with that is that 85% of those people are lactose intolerant. So that's why soy beverages and soy is such an important part of their diet. And that's why we have the markets we have today. In North America, sure, there's, there, is a, there is a consumption of non-GMO for soy milk, for, I'll say soy milk, but it should be soy beverage, um, in, in, uh, in non in organic, non-GMO and organic soybeans, you know, used for all those things. Hensel doesn't play in organic, but that's, that's what it is. In Asia, Japan is the key market. Those are the very discerning population. They do not want GMO. They expect the very best quality. And the Ontario farmers deliver great quality IP soybeans year in, year out. South Korea is also another big market. Uh, we deal with other places like Vietnam. All these Southeast Asian countries that are fairly affluent are buying non-GMO or identity preserved soybeans, food grade soybeans. Europe is another big market for um, food grade soybeans. You know, there, uh, there are some rules in place in the European Union that you, know, it, that you have to use some non-GMO. I am neither for or against non-GMO. You know, I don't care either way, but that's the way they do it. If you look at some of the emerging markets in Southeast Asia, there is rules in place that any food consumption 
must come from non-GMO, regardless if it's soybeans or corn or any direct food consumption must be non-GMO, which is, you know, that's how th governments can influence that sort of thing. Uh, in recent years, I would say that the amount of non-GMO used for feed is decreasing and the amount of non-GMO used for food is on the increase. Maybe total acres aren't changing, but that, that division is changing. More and more places are more interested in uh, cheaper feed, so they'll allow non -G or GMO uh, protein sources for their livestock, but they will not allow uh, GMO protein sources for their humans. Um, I'll kind of break down, there's like 900,000 acres potentially of uh, food grade soybeans in Canada. 330,000 acres is grown here in Ontario. 250,000 acres in Quebec. And the balance being, you know, mostly in Manitoba, which is a smaller 50,000 acres. Um, There is a growing consumer preference for non-GMO and organic products, both domestically and key import markets. This trend is driving our increased planting of non-GMO. It, it, sure, it is, for sure. Increasing the opportunities for selling non-GMO soybeans into food grade markets include domestic and international buyers. This is encouraging farmers to expand their non-GMO acres. As I mentioned, there's government programs in the world that, that uh, mandate that there's GMOs used. Challenges for, for GMO soybeans going forward is, is this cost of identity preservation and maintaining non-GMO certification. You know, that, that means that uh, some place like Hensel Co-op or Dirk's Elevator would have to hire a quality person or staff to maintain all the, all the requirements. So that adds some extra cost to this as well. Um, Fluctuations in market price also. So as premiums get higher, maybe more buyers will go back to GMO. You know, so there's always an ebb and flow here. Premiums can be too high. Cost of, cost of soybeans can be too high. So that maybe makes an influence as what, what buyers would do. You know, as, as we wrap this up, um, you know, there is great opportunities in dry beans and IP soybeans going forward uh, for Ontario farmers for sure. We have the infrastructure, we have the knowledgeable growers, we have everything in place to, to maintain our, our world-class products that we sell around the world.